Oh, let me hold on. I once said in prayer meeting that um, I was willing to be uncomfortable for God, and this is, for me is about as uncomfortable as it gets standing here. So, oh, there's some water. <laughs> hmm. Praise God. Hey, God. Stay there. Um, this, this speaks to me tonight in a big way. Um, how many of you young people are about 22 to 25 years of age? Raise your hands. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, kind of seems like a long time sometimes. A little bit. 25. A lot of things have happened in your life in that period of time. Mom and Jim prayed for me for 22 years. <laughs> I was gone from this church for 22 years. There's, there's kids here, I don't even know who you are because y'all weren't even here when I was. I was. Um, 22 years. <laughs> That's a long time. And like Phil had said, I had to write notes. Um, Phil said we can't stop praying just because we pray a little bit and then we think it's not God's will because something doesn't happen. If Mom and Jim had stopped praying after a year or two because it was God's will that I just not be here, I probably wouldn't be. Just let that marinate. The things that we pray for, the people that we pray for, whether it's us or somebody else, it does not go unnoticed. Let, I am nobody, <laughs> trust me. I do not see myself as anybody special. But if you need to be reminded of a miracle, here I am. I can say the same for Kristen. I can't speak for her, but I can say that. Mom and Jim prayed for me for a long time. And I'm sure sometimes they wanted to be just throw up their hands and say, what is going on here? But they didn't. I'm sure Jeff prayed for me too. I'm sure he, he's glad that he, he, that he did, because now I'm here. <laughs> it's a funny, I have to just, I have to say this. Um, last year when we came for JP's, um, for JP's 30th birthday party, um, Jeff and I were out on his front porch and we were just talking and I'm a girl so I talk a lot. And I was telling him a whole bunch of stuff that had been going on in my life and this and that and the other and I'm telling him how I'm never getting married again and you know, I'm gonna be a crazy old cat lady by myself. I'm never going through this again, yada, yada, yada. And he told me later, the whole time I'm standing, and this is a couple of hours um, that I, put forth this information to him <laughs> and he told me later he said all I thought all I could think of was there was hope <laughs> and I'm like were we having the same conversation <laughs> so somebody had hope somebody had hope And sometimes that's all it has to be, because our, our brain can't wrap our minds around anything else most of the time. But I just want to encourage y'all. My sisters are still out there, and I know y'all have got people out there. 22 years is nothing 
for Mom and Jim to have me standing here. And I'm glad they prayed for me because my life was, mm -mm -mm, it was not good. Five years ago, I tried to take my life. It was that bad. And all because I don't even want to go there, but they still prayed. Even after that, they didn't lose hope. They still, and they probably prayed harder, but I shouldn't be here, but I am. And I thank God for that and all of y'all. So don't lose hope. God can work miracles. He can. I'm a, li <laughs> I'm a living testimony. Praise God. I think I'm done. <laughs> Dawn, I'm just as nervous, but praise God, it's wonderful to be the child of the King. <clears throat> you know, my testimony is just as much a miracle as Dawn's. You know, Phil mentioned this ministry and how it got started, and I was a part of it. As far as naturally speaking, being in the midst, seeing God move, Hearing the Word of God, the anointed Word, <clears throat> being in those prayer meetings, being raised in a family that was instrumental in this work. We would even, uh, just not the service, the, the days that we had services, my dad and my mom was always <clears throat> loading me up and we were going to Brother Thomas's for prayer meetings and going visiting people and... Uh, I was right there in the middle of all of it. Raising my hands, playing the guitar, singing in the choir. <clears throat> and just as desperate as what Don's talking about. I want every one of you to hear me tonight. Just because you've sat in this church, just because you've been under this ministry, do you know Jesus Christ, the one that we've talked about? If you ever see Him as Tony and Phil in these other services, seeing Him for who He is, you can't see Him for who He is without seeing how desperate and how miserable you are. Oh my, praise God, if He's opened your eyes, that's what we're talking about. Having the scales removed from our eyes that we can see Him. Oh, what an awesome God He is. We ain't even scratched the surface when the anointing's here of really how worthy He is. Not even scratch the surface. Oh my, remove the scales from our eyes, God. But as Phil was talking, I thought about that, <clears throat> that story that's there. Not a story, but a true event that happened. There's two men on the road to Emmaus. Now here it is, they had heard the word of God. They had heard Jesus speak and to tell them what was going to happen. And here they are, they're walking down the road after he had been crucified and was saying, well, our hope is gone. Talking to one another. And Jesus even appeared and walked with them. Had a communication. My, my, if we could, if there was a screen thrown up here tonight and we could see our individual lives and see that the time that God was walking with us and talking with us. And later on, it goes on in the story, and after God revealed himself to him, they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? 
Well, listen, the burning of your heart within you is not the only thing that you need. We've sat under this truth right here. We've been moved and we've been stirred. But what had to happen is they come to the place that God sat down, Christ sat down with them. Jesus sat down at the table and he broke bread. And what did he do? He offered a prayer and gave thanks to his father. And after that happened, their eyes were opened. That's what has to happen. It's not just an emotional experience. This can be a pep rally. You can be stirred up and we can say, oh my God, this was wonderful. We're going to leave here and we're going to do better. But I'm telling you, we need to fall on our knees and say, my God, you have sat right here at this meeting and you have broke bread with us. We've had scales removed from our eyes. I have. Thank God for it. Oh, I praise Him. Don't take this meeting lightly. Let's go back to our individual. Because we're on a journey. We're walking. We're on a path. And my, my, I believe that Jesus is walking with us. And He is talking with us. He is... Oh, may he be invited into our homes and our lives, our families and our children. Sit down with them, break bread with them, cry out to God and say, God, open their eyes. Oh, Lord, that's what we need. We need more than anything else to shut our mouths and listen to God as he breaks bread with us and talks to us. He wants to reveal himself to us. And I'm just thankful tonight. I believe that that's what he's done in this meeting. What he's done for me. Thank you Lord. Can you give him thanks? Thank him for his mercy. To come and reveal himself. And to break bread with us. And share it with us. Amen. Man, I appreciate this so much tonight. What the Lord is doing for us. You know, I was thinking as Phil was speaking there. That what the Lord is setting before us. And showing us the difference between is this the difference between having a, a base in enemy territory, having a fort, if you will. And it's the difference between holding our position and defending our fort, and between going out and taking territory from the enemy. That's what he's setting before us because we can have everything just like he said right. We can and we can we can really do it right. I mean, we can say, God, we we have a watch all the time. We have three people watching the walls. We have infrared sensors. We have guys on machine gun turrets. Nobody's getting in here. This spy tried to get in the other day. We we eliminated him. We can do all that. But the problem is, there's a, another fort over there that the enemy's got, and in there he's got prisoners. There are people who are capped over there, and we can defend our fort all day long and not let the enemy get in there. And guess what? Those prisoners aren't getting freed by that. And that's what the Lord was setting before us tonight, is we're sitting there guarding our, our fort, saying, God, this is great. We're well defended here. And why isn't God delivering those prisoners? I just don't understand why, they, why they're still capped over there. Well, God wants us to get out of where it's safe and where it's comfortable and where we know what to expect and go where He's leading. Say, you're the captain of the salvation. And if you're leading over here into an enemy fort, I want to follow you. I want to be with you. Because the scripture says, it's, uh, you don't have to turn there, we know it. I'm just going to read one little part. It's over here in 1 Corinthians. Um, well, 2 Corinthians, I lost my place now. But anyway, I won't even bother reading it because we know the scripture. It's the, set, it's the part that says the weapons that we fight with, that we wage war with, they're not the weapons of the world. But they have spiritual power to do what, first and foremost? To demolish strongholds. That is an offensive function. Yeah, use weapons to defend yourself. But I tell you what, when you're taking it to demolish somebody else's stronghold, that's an offensive function. And I believe God wants us to have that vision tonight. And I believe it starts right here in our midst with the needs that we see because we know about them. But I believe there's more for us he's got that we haven't even seen yet. And he's getting us ready for that. That's what I want. I want to be a part of that. I want to learn how to battle in prayer. We had a, you know, something Phil said about that. I believe it's a real key because this came up in another service. It might have been the Wednesday or Sunday before the meeting. I can't remember. But it was another one of our services here. And he was talking about praying for something and then not seeing something in a certain amount of time and then saying, well, I guess that's not God's will. Folks, the enemy is going to be quick to tell us that something is not God's will when we don't see an immediate response. Because he knows that the only way he's going to win is if we give up. If we back down. The victory is not in question. The ability of God to deliver people is not in question. 
When Jesus Christ died on that cross, does the scripture not say he carried our infirmities? He took all our diseases. He, by his stripes we were healed. There's no lack of ability to deliver people. But the enemy knows the way he's going to win is to get us to give up and back down. And this is what I believe the Lord put, put on my heart. He brought it back to me tonight. Folks, we do not need to be letting the devil tell us what is and isn't God's will. Because first and foremost, he does not know. God doesn't reveal his secrets to him. In fact, he all the time is turning Satan's plans around for his own glory and his own good. Satan doesn't know what God's will is. And if he did, he surely wouldn't tell you and me. Because that's the last thing he wants is for us to be walking with him. And I believe when we go to prayer, we need to, you know, the scripture says that not to be anxious about anything. It's important that when we go, as we battle, that we don't get worked up and afraid. And like Phil said, anxious to see something happen. I, I was battling that yesterday when I was praying before the service yesterday. I, I appreciate what you said, Phil, because I had a very similar experience. I was praying. Just, I know you just kind of think and imagine, and oh, God's just going to come down. It's just going to explode, and things are going to be, you know, the devil's just going to be fleeing. It's going to be crazy, you know. And I believe, I believe the Lord spoke to me. And I don't, can't say it was for anybody else, but I know it was for me. I believe he spoke to me and said, I'm not going to do that. He said, because what happens is, talking to me, he said, what you tend to do, if you get something worked up in your emotions, you're too easy to think, well, that took care of that. Now that's taken care of, we can move on. And you get lazy and you quit drawing from the well, thinking, well, that took care of it. That was the thing I was looking for. Well, there's no experience that's what we're looking for. There's no one event that's going to do this. And I believe that's what he told me very clearly. I believe he said, son, there are no shortcuts. Yes. It's just that simple. There are no shortcuts. But draw in for me and go into battle. But, so we don't want to be anxious. We don't want to be striving for something. But the scripture does say, don't be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, let our requests be made known to him. If there's something on your heart and you don't know if it's God's will or not, we have an invitation in His Word to make our requests known to Him. We can take our concerns and our cares to God. There is nothing wrong with saying, God, this is what I, I see, this is what I feel, this is my heart's desire, and pray into that end. The key is that our prayer ends the same way Jesus' prayer ended. It's nevertheless not my will, but thine be done. If that's underneath, if that's the desire, we can go to Him with our, with our request, and we can say, Father, if this is not your will, Please show me, and show me in a way that I know it's you. Because when he tells us to, that, that something is not his will, it's going to be just like he did for Paul. Remember when Paul was praying for his thorn to be removed? I mean earnest prayer. He wanted to be delivered, and he was earnest. He was sincere. But God finally told him, that's not my will for you, Paul. But he didn't just leave him there, and Paul didn't walk away from that session of prayer feeling frustrated and defeated and despairing that this thorn wasn't going to go away. God gave him a specific word that gave him hope and it gave him peace. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you. If there's something on our heart that is not God's will, he can make it known and he'll do it in a way that it'll come with peace. Now when the enemy tells you that's not God's will and gets us to walk away, we walk away feeling defeated and frustrated and despair and gloom. And that's the difference. And I believe God wants to make the difference clear. Because a battle in prayer sometimes takes time and the enemy's going to be right there the whole time. It's not God's will. It's not God's will. Nothing's changing. Nothing's changing. Folks, let's not let the devil talk us out of taking our request to him. Because he is able to help us right where we're at. We don't have to understand every, we don't have to have every scripture in this Bible memorized. It's not like God wants to speak to you because you don't know the magic scripture over in Habakkuk somewhere. He can't speak to you because you don't know that one. <laughs> he can meet you where you're at. And me, folks. We can ask him with confidence. God, if this is not you, let me know. Because if you do it, there'll be peace. And I'll be able to lay that down with a peace that you're going to take us on through it. And we're going to get through it anyway. But until you do that, until you come and you show me and I have confidence, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to let the devil talk me out of this. So I'll tell you what, Dawn, I appreciate her testimony. appreciate seeing her every service. In you know, Scripture, there's one place where it talks about a woman when her labor comes on her, you know. There's a travail. There's an, you know, she's in distress. It's physically painful. It's a difficult time. But it says that after the child is born, she immediately forgets about that labor for the joy that a child has come into the world. You know, as you see that child grow, you don't, you know, I mean, three years from now, it seems like nothing. That was a small price to pay for this new life brought into the world. Tell you what, 22 years of labor in prayer was a small price to pay for that child to be brought into this kingdom. That was a small price to pay. God, give us the endurance and not let the devil talk us out of it. He does not know God's will. We don't need to listen to that voice. Let's take our request to him and leave it there because he's able to show us. Appreciate this word tonight, everybody that's been up here. Uh, 
you know, I was, Phil, Phil asked this question. He said, uh, is it just really easy for anybody to pray? And you know, just tonight, it's downstairs, it's dark down there, I was sitting in that chair, and started, you know, remembering some of the word that Ron shared last night, and started lifting some things up to the Lord. And you remember sometime in the last 12 or 14 months, Phil brought a message about special delivery packages. You guys remember that? And uh, I was sitting there starting to lift these things to the Lord, and this special delivery package came, and man, I went, oh, for me? And uh, started opening it up, and this is what was in that package. He says, you know, these people you're thinking you're concerned about said you were worse than they are when you were their age. And man, I got that back in the box. <laughs> And, you know, yeah, return to sender, tape that sucker up and send it home. <laughs> you know, in the immortal words of a man that preaches over in Jacksonville, snakes aren't supposed to talk. <laughs> Sometimes they do, but they're not supposed to. And, and I, this, this, this is the word that came. And, you know, I have to say like Ben, it might have just been for me. So, so I thank you for your patience. But turn to Philippians. I really believe this is for all of us here. It's in uh, chapter chapter three, and uh, I believe this is true. I believe there's times we're gonna we're gonna have to just forget forget those things that are past. You know, this, this, is a, this is a new hour, and, and it's a new way. From this day forward, it's a new hour, and it's a new way. God's going to lead us in ways we haven't gone before. He's going to say, come on, this way. And, and it's going to be different. And God's grace is sufficient for it to be different. And starting in verse 10, this was Paul. And, you know, we, we like to... You know, Phil talked about, and Ben too, you know, about just that swooping down and changing everything. And, you know, we think of these men sometimes as such heroes, we just cannot identify with them. But I'm going to tell you something. Elijah was a man of like passions. And that's true of all these men. They were men. And this is what Paul said, starting in verse 10. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. He gathered us. He gathered us. He called us. He brought us. He's leading us for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's, that's where this is going. That's where this is going. And he says straining. I'm sure there were times in that 22 years we strained. I don't even remember that. I don't even remember that. I'm going to tell you something. When God's word comes true, when his miracle becomes real, when it becomes real, you, it was worth it all. Yes. And it will be worth it all. Yes. It will be worth it all. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Yes. Young people, and to me almost everybody's young, Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of forts out there with prisoners in them. You can get some of them with God's help. His grace is sufficient. Don't leave them over there and leave it to somebody else. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Don't be a victim of your past. There's all kinds of past. Some have to do with what somebody did to me. Some, I think worse than that, 
or some of the things I've done to somebody else, but we don't have to be a victim of our past. God's grace, God's grace, we can forget those things that are past. It's a new hour and it's a new day. Amen.